Hi everyone, welcome to a new vlog. I haven't vlogged in ages, so it's gonna be weird trying to get used to this again. So this is the spoilery vlog for The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas, but I thought I would turn it into a little bit of a weekend reading vlog as well because it is Easter weekend and I'm doing some stuff this weekend so I figured it would make nice vlog content and I'm going to be reading The Assassin's Blade this weekend. So this is obviously the short story collection which is a part of the Throne of Glass series and um, I think there's about five or six short stories in here that all take place uh, before the start of the first book throne of glass so i will be reading and talking about all of my thoughts on what goes on in this book if you haven't seen my previous vlogs in this series uh, i will leave a link in the description and also in the cards as well to the playlist i have read up to air of fire so far in throne of glass and this is my first time ever reading the series um so i'm just sort of documenting it as a test, I guess, to see how I get on. I don't know. Um, if you saw the Air of Fire reading vlog, you'll know that I didn't enjoy it that much. I did softy enough at one point and I rated it three stars. So far, the Throne of Glass series has very has been very mid-range for me. Um, it hasn't really blown me away yet. And I'm a little bit apprehensive to read this one because Air of Fire was just not it for me. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how I get on with this. Um, I think I'll enjoy it more than Air of Fire just because it's a short story collection. So hopefully there won't be too much filler in there. Um, and also it's following Selena when she was doing her assassin shit. So <laughs> yeah, um, I think I'll find that a little bit more interesting. I will do sort of spoiler warnings throughout because I want this to be like a weekend reading vlog as well as a spoilery vlog for this book. Um, I might just put like spoiler things while I'm discussing what's going on in the story if there's anything too specific. Um, I have gone into major spoilers before or um, in my previous videos in this series throughout but I think I might save major spoilers for the end of this vlog. I don't know because this is a prequel series it's I'm probably not going to end up spoiling major things that happen like later in the series. Um, I feel like the only thing that would spoil is like um, the events of each of the short stories. So to sort of just catch you up to speed on what's been going on in my life so far. By the way, I have just come out of the shower, which is why my hair is sopping wet. Um, and I let it air dry. So yeah, you can just deal with that. Um, but it's the 13th of April today. Um, I've had an okay reading month so far. If you've seen my April TBR, you know I've got quite a lot of books to get through. Um, in April and um, I have read three of the books that were on my official TBR and I've also read three other ones. Um, so this morning I finished The Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice while I was on the bus. Last night I finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and over the past weekend I have been reading Heartstopper volume one, two, three and four and I am obsessed. I absolutely love it. I kind of wish that I had vlogged my experience reading that for the first time because I'd never read that before and now I'm just so in love with the story. I love Alice Oseman so much and I can't wait to read more of her other books. Um, yeah I'm just oh god I sobbed so much through the last one so I'm a little bit like nothing can top that at the moment. Um, but yeah this vlog is all about the Assassin's Blade um, and I guess I'll catch up to speed when I've read some of this book. <laughs> hey guys, so it is now the next day and last night I read the first novella, The Assassin and The Pirate Lord. I don't know if it's just because I was so tired I was literally falling asleep or if it just wasn't that great but it didn't really make a lasting impression on me. Um, I'm already starting to forget the specifics of what happened in it um, but I did like what was happening. We got to see sort of Selena as her badass self but also a little bit more of a human side of her because she was you know freeing some slaves. Um, I also liked getting to see her dynamic with Sam 
Um, having read the first three books in the series, we know that Sam was a lover of Selena. Um, and the dynamic that they have at the moment is very much good, like rivals to lovers, enemies to lovers sort of going on. So I do quite like that. But yeah, overall, this wasn't really anything that just made a lasting impression on me. Um, it was only about 70 pages. And I know that the later novellas are a bit longer. So there is more time to sort of get into what's happening because it was just really short. And I feel like a bit, what was the point? Um, but I do think it does set up some character specifics for Selena, especially having read the later books. Um, so yeah, I just sort of very much like, okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. <laughs> you know, it just didn't really do anything for me. Like I just didn't feel anything while I was reading it. I was just kind of like, yeah, okay, cool. That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Today I am going to Nottingham to see Juno Birch tonight with my brother so I will try and get some footage of that for you. I'm very very excited. Hoping to get some reading done while I'm on the train. I'm debating whether or not I should bring a second book with me just in case I get bored of this one or in the event that I do finish it like on the way back because it's a two hour train journey. So I'm just thinking should I bring another book with me just in case and I'm kind of leaning more towards yes. Even though the likelihood of me finishing The Assassin's Blade that quickly is very slim, like it's a 400 page book, so <laughs> I probably won't finish it on the train, but I'm just a bit like, well, what if? So yeah, but I'm looking forward to tonight. Um, I'm just glad to be off work at the moment. I didn't want to get out of bed this morning and I'm just, I'm just so tired. You wouldn't think working in a library would be that tiring, but trust me, it is. It's not an easy job. <sighs> okay, I need to go finish packing, so I will see you guys in a bit. <laughs> update in a couple of days uh because i was away and then i just couldn't be bothered <laughs> uh it's easter sunday now um you probably saw some b-roll of my trip 
to Nottingham to see Juno Birch. I had a great time. She was so funny. Yeah, it was just great. I loved it. Um, I would definitely recommend going to see her <laughs> next time she's touring. I think it, it wasn't my first drag show, but it was like my first official drag show. I don't know because I've only ever been to one proper drag show before and that was Vinegar Strokes um, uh, at De Montfort Students' Union a few years ago and it was like a free thing, like you you, ju you just went and you turn up and it was free and it was great and there were some local queens performing that night as well. Um, but this was pretty much just Juno Birch and Licorice Black um, and they were, they were great. Um, I loved it. So yeah, go see a drag queen. That's the thing I recommend you do because it was great. Anyway, um, so update on the Assassin's Blade. I did manage to get quite a bit of reading done on the train. Um, I've since uh, I last spoke to you, I've read uh, The Assassin and the Healer, The Assassin and the Desert, and I'm now halfway through The Assassin and the Underworld. Um, I kind of wanted to do an update between each story, but obviously I haven't really been able to do an update while I was on the train. I'm not I'm not vlogging on the train, like that's not gonna happen. Um so I'll just sort of talk you through my thoughts on the other two stories. So the Assassin and the Healer. Um that was the shortest of the stories in this collection, but I definitely think it was an effective one. Um I really liked seeing Selena train um the the girl, what was her name? Was it Irene? Um, I really like sort of seeing that side of her to like show her how to like practice self-defense. Um, it was certainly a side of Selena that like I'm not used to seeing. I feel like I'm still sort of getting to know who she is as a person. <laughs> Thanks for that cat. It's a side of Selena that we've like not really seen before. Um, I'm so used to her being like this bitch basically and having this wall up and just not seeing who she actually is and i feel like the more we get to know her and like who she really is you start to see that softer side of her and i'm i'm liking the selena that we are getting to know through these short stories um she very much has those like queenly duties ingrained in her and I think my problem with these books is they're I'm sort of expecting something that they aren't um like I don't really know like when I first went in I didn't really know what to expect and then the first book sets up this dynamic with Selena and Dorian and Kale um and it does take a very different direction in Air of Fire and so I'm still kind of like a little bit thrown I think of like what direction it's supposed to be going in um but I'm enjoying it more as I'm letting myself enjoy it. I feel like I went into these books sort of expecting to not like them and because I went in feeling that way I'm really really resistant to anything that happens that I'm not expecting I don't know um but yeah anyway the assassin and the healer um I also really enjoyed sort of seeing it from the perspective of Irene and she does mention um at one point um that selena she uh has like wildfire in her eyes so the quote is this girl wasn't like wildfire she was wildfire deadly and uncontrollable and slightly out of her wits which having read air of fire i really like that little that little nod um so i did really enjoy the assassin and the healer it was much more interesting than the assassin and the pirate lord um and i quite like that each of the stories as well are sort of following on from each other it's sort of like a snapshot of things that happen in selena's life i'm assuming leading up to her capture um in endovia i think that's probably how the last story is going to end what was the next one the assassin in the desert i loved that one it really sort of reminded me of nevernight because that's an assassin school in the desert and it's like a secret society type situation. I loved it. I loved The Assassin in the Desert. Um, I kind of wish we could have had a full book sort of in that situation. Um, if anybody has recommendations for books that are like about assassin schools, please give them to me. I live for an assassin school type setting. I don't know why I love it so much, but I am like here for it. 
um i yeah i really really enjoyed it it sort of was a way for selena to build some character to learn about being an assassin in a different way because all she's known is what a robin has like taught her and like the mass the silent master and all the assassins at um i can't remember the name of the school but the school in in that story um they're like normal you know they're not like beating each other up they don't threaten each other they're all pretty much good friends i loved it um i did not see the betrayal coming either um that genuinely shocked me um i feel like i should have seen it coming but i was genuinely surprised and then when selena let her go at the end um by waiting 21 minutes instead of 20 minutes i was just like oh my god like selena is actually a nice person <laughs> and i i really like i i just wasn't expecting her to be so nice and i really hope that we get to see more of this side of selena in queen of shadows because i will actually like enjoy that book more i think because um of that front that she puts up i've been really resistant to her as a character and i'm not saying you have to like the main character to enjoy a book but for a series like this i definitely think it's an important factor and because i didn't like selena for so long i just didn't enjoy the books as much but i'm really i'm enjoying this a lot more than i thought i would it's not like five star material for me it might still end up being around a three star um we will see what uh corpile tells me because this is the first book i'm reading while i'll be using the corpile system to write um yeah we'll see what that happens brings me but yeah I, I really liked the assassin in the desert it just it was so fun and also um the scene where she gets the spider silk and then at the end she gets it like sewn or maybe it's at the start of the next story actually um she gets it sewn into her armor I can remember that being a key thing in one of the first three books but I can't remember which one and why it was relevant because she gets it sewn over her heart so I'm, I, I really I tried looking it up and I can't find it anywhere so i it's my dumbass for like reading the first four books over 12 months like i read throne of glass for the first time last april and i'm only on the assassin's blade so i can't really remember like the specifics so like small little details like that are kind of being lost on me and i'm sure there's more things that i've missed as well in these books um so that it's kind of being lost on me because i've waited so long to get to them um but because i'm enjoying this a lot more i think maybe i will speed through hopefully uh the next few books um there's four books after this one um and they will get significantly longer after that so i'm a bit apprehensive also what, what was her name uh Asom ansel ansel i think she might reappear at some point in the series. I don't recognise the name yet, but I feel like she's going to reappear at some point in the next four books. This is just a theory. Don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. I don't want to be spoiled in that way. They keep mentioning a tower in the desert, in this sort of area of the world. I kind of feel like that's where Tower of Dawn is going to be set. Don't, don't tell me if I'm right or wrong if you've read these books, but I kind of think that's sort of what it's leaning towards i don't know um i guess we'll see when i finally get to that book whether i was right or not i don't it's i mean it's not anything major but i kind of feel like that part of the world is going to be really relevant to tower of dawn i could be completely wrong don't tell me if i'm out or not but yeah uh interested to see what what happens there final section of this update i'm halfway through the assassin and the underworld now we haven't seen sam at all in the last couple of stories and now that he and selena have been reunited i'm like i really enjoy their dynamic i really enjoy their relationship and i'm really sad that it's going to end i feel like because we know sam is dead at the start of the series um and i kind of feel like we're going to see him die maybe in the last story in this book and i'm kind of like really sad that that's going to happen um i really really like sam as a character and his relationship with selena and the, this little like rivals to lovers thing that they've got going on 
um it reminds me a lot of jason clary in the mall instrument series i'm living for it um and i'm really sad that it's not going to last because this is the thing as well like this will be selena's basically like fourth love interest we've seen on page because there was a thing with dorian she has a thing going on with kale there's sam and then there's rowan who only appeared in air of fire and because i was so disconnected from what was happening in air of fire i don't think i actually realized that she and rowan are like the end game relationship <laughs> so i was that was almost completely lost on me um i i read a recap of air of fire so i kind of remember what happened but anything that was like romantic didn't notice so mm. <laughs> yeah but I'm, I'm really enjoying this i've just got past the bit where she almost drowns in the sewers disgusting disgusting i if you're gonna drown who wants to drown in raw sewage like that is horrible and her reaction by taking a thousand baths afterwards is completely reasonable i've got about 30 pages after the assassin in the underworld and then the assassin in the empire to read and then i will have finished this um i would really would like to try and finish this before the end of the bank holiday but we will see i have about yeah i have about 130 pages left then to read um i definitely think i could do that today if i put my mind to it um i probably could have finished the assassin in the underworld yesterday but um i started playing sims i couldn't stop <laughs> so yeah um in all fairness i haven't played any video games for like the whole of april that's a lot. I played the entirety of our life, like the first week and a half of April. I haven't played The Sims in ages, so I, I just really wanted to get back to my save file and my rotational Sims because I'm very nearly at the end of a round and I just kind of want to wrap it up so that at least I can put the game down in a place that makes sense to me. If you're interested in hearing about what's going on with my Sims 2 so far, like, let me know. Maybe I will do a separate thing for it at some point because I just, I love my save file so much. Um, anyway, yeah, hopefully I'll try and finish this today or tomorrow um, because I just really want to get it finished. I have four more books to read in the month of April and we are now past the halfway point. I am starting to panic a little bit because they're not short books, but we'll we'll try, we'll see what we can do. Um, I did start City of Fallen Angels yesterday morning. I've been listening to the audiobooks for these while reading them physically. Um, so I just put the, like, the audiobook on um, in the morning, like while I'm in the shower and stuff. And I'm really enjoying this one. Like this, I mean, I'm only hundred pages in, but this is my favorite one so far because I've gotten past the major like conflict that happens over the first three books regarding the main relationship I'm even more invested in it now now that we've got past the weird stuff I can enjoy it a little bit more without feeling strange about it so I'm really enjoying that so far I am enjoying it more than this but I've enjoyed this series more than I've enjoyed Throne of Glass anyway um so that's sort of a general reading vlog update for you so yeah I'm gonna go get some breakfast and read. Okay, cool. See you in a bit. <laughs> it is now easter monday and the bank holiday weekend is coming to an end and i'm so sad about it because i have to go back to work tomorrow and i don't want to i just want to stay on my holidays i should book more time off this weekend but never mind i haven't finished the assassin's blade just yet i wanted to finish it this morning because i i reckon i can finish the last 60 or so pages in about an hour so i had intended to wake up this morning and read it finish it 
and then if I could give you an update and like wrap up the vlog and everything um but I woke up super super late so I haven't had the time to finish this yet I have started my day with some yoga and then I need to um do some housework and also have my breakfast before I can even think about sitting down to read so I haven't finished this this just yet i'm trying to get myself into some sort of a routine where i do like a little bit of yoga in the morning just to wake myself up because i have a lot of like back and shoulder problems where it's just like sore almost all of the time and i know it's because i don't move a lot like i stand all day at work and then when i come home and i just sit in like my office chair so i'm not moving enough and that's why i have all these problems and yoga and just stretching myself out really helps so i'm trying to like have a loose sort of daily schedule where i do that anyway um i'm halfway through the final story in this which is the assassin and the empire um and this one i'm really really enjoying as well um so i finished the assassin and the underworld and um basically just at the end of that selena and sam tell a robin that they are leaving and selena buys her freedom with all the money she was um, like awarded um, in the assassin in the desert for saving the master's life. The two of them are now living in an apartment together. It's Selena's apartment, Sam's living with her um, and they're sort of just starting their relationship. I think that it's about a month has passed since the end of the assassin and the empire. The job that Selena was on in the assassin and the underworld went very very wrong so she was hired to assassinate someone and retrieve some documents that had information about um, slaves and safe houses for slaves. So Selena thought that the person she was contracted to kill was going to uh, reveal this information to the king so that he could like foil all these plans um, and it turns out he was actually the one that was going to like execute these plans for these safe houses for um, like escaped slaves and so Selena was just a bit like oh no like I've, I've killed him because she was that's what she was told to do from a robin so she sort of ruined stuff a little bit there yeah <laughs> oh dear so i think she is feeling a lot of guilt about that right now because at the very start of the stories she ruins a robin's plans to buy a bunch of slaves and now um she has sort of he's got his own back on her and she has been liable i don't know um and also i was wrong about the spider silk i've definitely something was definitely going on with spider silk in the main series because uh the spider silk she acquires in assassin in the desert uh is put into sam's armor uh to save sam which i didn't realize uh until i, I read it <laughs> in <laughs> the assassin of the underworld um so that makes sense but i there's definitely something going on with spider silk in the main series as well so i'm not sure what that where that came in because i can't remember so the assassin and the so the assassin and the empire um yeah i'm about halfway through and um it's kind of i can tell it's building up to something so at the very start of the story selena is in a wagon being taken to endovia um, and this is taking place 11 days before that and also having read the first three books I kind of know what's going to happen to a couple of characters um I've just read that um so there is a quote in this where Sam and Selena are um you know like being intimate and um Selena thinks spending all the time in the world with Sam that was a treasure worth paying anything for and it just sort of broke my heart because she's not going to get all the time in the world with Sam because Sam is going to die and I'm pretty sure he's going to die at the end of this story and I'm not ready for it I'm so sad about it she and Sam are planning to take down two big crime lords in Rifthold um so a Robin's a bit like what the hell are you doing like you're not going to be able to pull this off um because they, they need the money to leave um and I think that's where things are going to go wrong. They're going to try and take down these crime lords and then Sam is going to die. I know obviously it's coming but I'm going to be so sad about it because I like him as a love interest for Selena. 
I need to go and get on with my day and then I can finally finish that. So I will see you probably in my last vlog update. We'll see. <laughs> Sam went out to kill that guy and he's not come back yet. And I'm pretty sure he's dead. Ah. I feel so bad for Selena. <laughs> They were all set to go and start their new life on the southern continent. And he's he's not back. Mm. Little baby, a little baby, a little baby. I finished it. I finished it. I'm not okay. <laughs> so many thoughts. <laughs> I can't remember what I was talking to you about in my last update. I think Sam had just... Sam had gone missing, that was it. Sam had gone missing and he was killed um, by that random dude um, and Selena was very, very heartbroken about it and she's trying to figure out like who has done it. Of course it was a Robin, like I'm not surprised about that at all. <laughs> and then she gets captured and taken to Endovia, which again, I knew was going to happen, but it's still, it hurts, it hurts so much. But, right. When she she sees a white stag on her way, that that's Rowan, isn't it? Ro Rowan is a a white stag, isn't he? He's the he is the Lord of the North, right? I'm not making that up. I can't remember if it's mentioned in Air of Fire or if I've seen it somewhere, but that was Rowan, right? It has to be. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I'm back on my Sarah J. Mass bullshit. I think I really really enjoyed this. Um, it was definitely a lot more interesting than Air of Fire to me. I really liked what was going on with Selena, seeing a little bit more of her backstory and seeing her relationship with Sam. I think the only thing I really wish is that it had just been one continuous novel instead of a sh series of short stories. I think that with some editing it could have definitely just been one continuous novel because all of the stories continued on from each other. Um, I, I feel like the way, especially with the last two, they just sort of felt like um, a very disjointed continuation of the same story. So I definitely feel like it could have just been a book about Selena's backstory rather than four, five short novels, you know? Especially because the first two were so short that like they didn't really feel like they added much. It was just sort of a little bit of like random information to, to get the ball going. Especially the Assassin and the Healer, like that one wasn't even mentioned again in the next three, whereas the last three mentioned stuff from the previous one, so the Pirate Lord and then like you know everything that was going on from desert onwards like was mentioned in all of the stories but like the assassin and the healer just wasn't even acknowledged i don't know if it's just like an extra bonus one that sarah j mass has written or what but it was i mean i like that story but it definitely didn't have much relevance to anything else that was going on so i don't know but i definitely feel like it could have been one continuous story rather than like five short ones but i did really like it um i've literally just finished it i haven't corpelled it or anything but pure vibes alone i'm thinking it's about a four star um i i did really really enjoy this and it definitely got a lot more interesting as time went on as we got to know sam a little bit more and as we got to see like a little bit more of selena as a person i'm so excited to read queen of shadows i just i don't know when i'm gonna get to it because it is a little bit daunting because at the moment I've sort of like been okay with one of the books in the series and then loved the next book so the pa that pattern I will not like Queen of Shadows <laughs> so I'm a little bit apprehensive like what if I really don't like it but this was really good I kind of wish I had started with this book um instead of Throne of Glass just to sort of get that background information about Selena and then gone into the series if I was to reread I definitely would start with this one instead but I yeah I really really enjoyed it oh my god yes it was brilliant but that's the end of the vlog since I've finished the book uh, thank you so much for watching and spending the weekend with me I've had a great time vlogging again I really wish that I had the time to vlog more but I just I don't know, like, I don't really do much in my life. Like, I'm not that interesting of a person. So I don't really have a lot of stuff to put in a vlog other than just talk about the book that I'm reading, which I know, like, people like seeing like, updates as, like, they go, but I'm also a bit like, well, <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't really have the time to, like, weekly vlog, like, edit and post and stuff like that. But 
I want to do more vlogs where I'm reading like a whole series or something and I, I every time I do that I sort of <laughs> forget like I really wish that I'd vlog my experience reading Heartstopper and I really wish that I'd vlogged me reading Crescent City as well but you know hindsight it's a beautiful thing um but yeah thank you all so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed spending the weekend with me um hopefully there will be another installment in the throne of glass fogs sooner than this one I feel like I read Air of Fire in like October or something it's a very long time ago now oh my god and it's been about 12 months since I started reading this series as well um I think I might have mentioned this earlier in the vlog but I started the first book Throne of Glass April last year which was a very different time for me I just started a, a new job which is a different job to what I do now and we just moved into our house and like we hardly had anything furniture about and I don't think I had decorated yet either I'm pointing at a blank wall but I promise it has been painted I did have a a picture here but the frame broke because it fell off the wall so I still need to get a new frame for my print anyway <laughs> yeah um if you enjoyed this video please do give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the assassin's blade if you enjoyed it um which one was your favorite short story I still think that the assassin in the desert is my favorite as a standalone story whereas like the last two definitely feel more like the same story just split into two weird sections but if you haven't already and you would like to be please do subscribe to my channel i'll try and post a new video every single week saying that i haven't put a video up from last week um yet so <laughs> we're, we're probably going to get two this week maybe anyway yeah thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you soon goodbye <laughs>